So I have found myself in another situation where I have the opportunity to go potentially do a large buyout. So I'm going to the home of a family friend, someone I've known most of my life. Hi, Connie. I'm going to her house. She has been in touch with me for a while. We've been just working on a date to get together so that I can look at her things. She's just looking to get rid of a bunch of stuff. I went to high school with both of her daughters. One was two years older than me. One was a year behind. We all cheered together. Um, I think I cheered with her young her daughter, not her older daughter. Wonderful family. I think both of her daughters got best dressed in high school and Connie is a sharp woman. She always had great fashion sense, always looked amazing. So I'm super excited to see what she has. If she feels comfortable with it, I will do some recording at her house, but I'm super excited. The last time I did an estate sale buyout, it turned out to be a lot of fun and a lot of work. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. So let's go to Connie's house and see what we can find. Wish me luck. Okay, I'm in Connie's beautiful home and she had all these things set out for me. We've been chatting for a while. So some Talbot, some new tag J. Crew. She's got some Ralph Lauren, some mall brand stuff, some Ellen Tracy, Lillian Gray. Um, we got some Ugg boots over here. I love these. She was fancy, Miss Connie. I love these bags. Donald Pliner. This is a cool hound, which I love. No, you're good. <laughs> Connie, you gotta come say hi. This is Connie. Hello. <laughs> she just grabbed with me my a water. water. I did ask her if she wanted some wine. <laughs> I she know. Refused. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just past noon, so I'm trying to be good. She has some Burberry, and there's so many beautiful leather coats here. I was saying earlier, before I came in, Connie, I was recording and saying that you were the best dressed woman oh, in town, for sure. Thank you so much. This leather is so nice. This. Oh, Isn't that awesome? I didn't see that fringe. This is like awesome. And feel how soft. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, which one is this? Leather Concepts. That this is stunning. Was, it's just like with a pair of cowboy boots or oh, something. Yeah. It just looks... Oh my gosh. I wish that would fit me. That is so nice. Um, oh, this brand, I want to look into this one, Connie. This one, I've never. Model? You'll have yeah, to look it up. But these do go on them. Yes, that's an easy fix. Those are fun. And I like the square toe. The square toe is fun. Oh, these heels were pretty. Leopard, I feel like, is always in style, you yeah, know? I think so. I love those. Oh, we had some jackets over here, too, that were nice. I don't know if you want to. I'm, I'm trying to ask Connie, do you just want me to take everything, or do you want me to, like, go through? But I think Let I'm... Let me get you those two bags. Oh, we're going to look at some Louis bags yes. that have, that need a little love. Yes. Um, you know, she's got lots of stuff new with tags. She's a, she's a good shopper. Oh, these were all cashmere sweaters over here. She was, like, a Saks girl and Bloomingdale's. A lot of Valerie Stevens. DKNY. It's all beautiful. This whole pile. Saks Fifth Avenue. I've never seen that label. Pretty. All cashmere. Those are all cashmere sweaters. I'm probably going to take everything and we'll have to go home and go through. It's so much more peaceful than when I did the estate sale buyout because I'm able to look through stuff and everything's so nice. Do I have my mask on backwards and it's like all my lipstick? That's kind of gross. I definitely put this on the wrong way. <laughs> All right, we have some Louis bags that need a little love, but we're gonna see what we can do here. Two speedies. This one has the uh, strap. This one has some issues here, but we're moving it all out. I love this Cole Han one. Keep it for yourself. Oh, it's pretty. You might wear it a couple times. All right, all right. Taking it all. Bye. <laughs> Here I am, another buyout. I'm just coming up for air from my first buyout and now I'm doing another one, but you know, this is what we do. It's exciting, it's fun. I am now going to the bank to withdraw $1,000 and I went to one ATM and they would only dispense 800. So now I'm going to another one 
to get a couple hundred more. So I'm going to get the cash, go back. I had no idea what I was going to buy. I had no idea what Connie wanted, like how we were going to work things out. But I'm very excited to explore a little bit with the Louis Vuitton bags. One I'm going to try to restore and maybe sell or wear or keep. Um, and then the other one that's like kind of beyond repair. I'm just going to have fun with the canvas. I made a pit stop at a local consignment store that I used to do business with and there is a real funny story behind this so I didn't end up buying anything but I will let you know what I did do here in just a moment. Who's ready for a fun story? I went to the drive through ATM and they would only dispense $800 at once. I never take out that much cash and it said, you know, you can only get 800 at a time. So I was like, oh damn, I'm gonna have to go to another bank. So I'm in a fairly large plaza. So I go to a different bank, different area of the plaza, and I go through the whole thing to go withdraw $200 to make it the 800, and I mean, to make it the thousand. The second ATM location said, you've exceeded funds for the day, meaning uh, I guess I can't take up more than 800 in a day. I've never tried. So I'm like, what am I going to do? I had $140 in cash in my pocket, in my bag. So I'm like, all right, I'm at 940, like 945. I had some ones, but I'm like, I don't want to give Connie ones. What am I going to do? So I happen to be at this plaza and over here in back of me, that is a consignment store and I've done business with them in the past. So I said, I wonder if I have a credit there. I missed my last appointment. I did a lot of business with them pre-pandemic and then after things opened. I haven't been here in like six months. I'm like, let me just go in. So I go in, I wait, I poke around, I have some footage. And then I went up and I'm like, do I have a credit? Gave her my name, $67 credit. I'm not joking. I had $67 credit. So I was like, no way. So anyways, I signed off for it. And well, first she reached into her drawer and I'm like, damn it, she's gonna write me a check and I need cash. And she reached in and she grabbed a 50 and she's like, are you okay with big bills? Because I just grabbed them out of my little safe here because I hate having big bills. Nobody wants them, do you want them? I'm like, I'll take it. So $67 and I had $945. So now I'm gonna go back to Connie's. I'm gonna bring her $1,000 in cash. I didn't know this was gonna be so complicated, but kind of a funny story. I really lucked out that it happened to be in a plaza with a consignment store I've done business with before because my bank shut me out. All right, so back to Connie's and then I'm hitting some drive through because I am hungry and I'm gonna go home. <laughs> what a day this has been. These buyouts are always interesting stories. Okay, let's go. My helper. All right, we more here. This is one of my favorite pieces, this leather coat. And more boxes. Careful with that leather. It's the last of it? I think so. All right, thank you. Oh boy. Time to work. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go through this. I have to do intake here. Ay, ay, ay. I'm actually pretty excited. There's some really nice pieces in here. Definitely a higher buy cost, but I'm excited to see what we got. We are back in my studio here at home and I have pretty much photographed uh, about 60% of this haul. And so I wanted to share everything with you. This was a different type of buyout compared to my estate sale. And I can link the estate sale buyout that I did back in June or July up above. Um, this was a totally different vibe, but pretty exciting. I spent a lot more money on this buyout, but I did get two Louis Vuitton pieces and Burberry. There were some incredible surprises in the other buyout. So I don't think I'm going to make as much off of this one, but I'm still really excited to get all of these things listed and to see what the outcome might be for me. Um, I have to say that at the very end there, when I asked Connie if she had any 
Louis Vuitton pieces, um, because I've been so in the Louis Vuitton zone lately, I was thrilled when she came down with the two Speedy bags. Now, I can start with them. They are super uh, in need of love. One of them I'm just really going to try to get about two or three hundred dollars for. The other one I'm contemplating keeping and I've started to clean it up a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to dye the handles black. I'm not sure what I'm going to do or I might just list it as is and send it to a new home and reinvest that money into a different bag. Why don't we start with the Louis Vuitton because I mean I was so thrilled when she came down with these and I've also seen so many people restore Louis Vuitton bags and so uh, or recycle the canvas and use it. The thing that's really great about the bag that I'm thinking about keeping is that the canvas is in really good shape. So the leather definitely shows wear um, and this zipper is broken, um, but I'm going to show it to you. The inside definitely has a little staining on this one. I think what happened is Connie used this first and then she used this one. I believe these are the Speedy 30s. They are authentic. Um, the zipper on this I question because it's a YKK zipper. It's not marked Louis Vuitton. But I read online that if you purchased a Louis Vuitton bag prior to, I think it was 1990, some of the hardware and zipper pulls were YKK and they did not say Louis Vuitton. So that's probably the case for this one. One little thing that I need to look into because you can sell just the lock and key for $50 to $80, um, the Louis Vuitton ones that are made out of brass, I believe. The issue here is the key is locked, as you can see, um, <laughs> but the keys are on this little piece of the lock right here. So there's no way of actually taking this off and getting it into the keyhole to unlock it to sell it. So I could sell it on the bag. That might be what I do. But I think what I want to do is clean it up because it has some rust spots on it and maybe mark this separate or put it on this bag if this is the bag that I decide to keep. And I believe I can go to a Louis Vuitton boutique and they have keys that will open this for me. And then of course I can clean it up and use it that way. So my hope is that if I do sell these that I could get between two and $300 for this one. The corners on this are very damaged. I'm hoping between four and five on this one. This one, the zipper does work. Um, and the inside of the second one is much cleaner and there is just one little corner that has a little bit of wear and honestly I can live with that. It's just this little section right here. The other corners are in great condition. The leather tags on the side are in pretty decent condition. This one's kind of wrinkled, but I've already applied cleaner and conditioner to the canvas on this bag. The inside pocket is there, and you do always wanna make sure that you can find the serial number when authenticating a bag, um, and that is right here. As well as, you know, all of the little uh, hardware pieces have Louis Vuitton on them. And there are some really good fakes out there, so that doesn't necessarily mean it's real, um, but those are indicators. And because I know the original owner, Connie's like, these are real. She had some fake Chanel bags. She's like, do you want to look at those? And I'm like, I really don't. They're, they're, it's nothing that I would sell, um, you know, because I'm pretty anti-fake out there. Um, just because there's so many fakes rolling around that people can easily be deceived. I'm going to try to go quickly through this and I will give you all the numbers and what I ended up paying per item. I think what I decided is that each of the Louis Vuitton bags and the Burberry coat, I kind of thought in my head that I paid, I don't know, I think my thinking was like between 75 and 100 for each of those. And then that would put the cost of goods of everything else at $15, which is high for me. Um, I think that this is going to be a slow tail sell. I don't think a lot of these items are going to fly off the shelf, but I do think they will eventually sell. And hopefully I will maybe triple my money. Right, so let's get started with some of the outerwear. She had these, this beautiful Isaac Mizrahi, and this is not Isaac Mizrahi for Target. This is actual Isaac Mizrahi. This is a wool coat. There is the tag. Most of these pieces are vintage. I think a lot of them are from the 80s and the 90s. This is in really nice condition. I do believe that the, the real label for Isaac Mizrahi is taken at the real real. Um, I would probably price this about at 150. I'm actually still really unsure on a lot of the pricing for this stuff. 
um, unless I've already listed it. I was really excited that she had a lot of black leather and black leather is pretty hot right now. And that was one of the deciding factors for me that she had some really trendy leather pieces. Um, this is Valerie Stevens, which is just like a Macy's brand. Um, but I love the little woven detail on the side of it. And it's a little hook and eye closure. It's an extra large, which is great. I'm hoping to get between like 75 and 150 for all the different leather pieces per item, depending. This would be on the lower end. It's not a big name. It's kind of lightweight. This puffer jacket is vintage from Jones, New York, and it is gorgeous. It is like full length and it has like a little side zipper. This is a size small. She really had a variety of sizes in here, literally from small to extra large. I think I have this priced at $99 or $79. This is listed. This is down filled, full zip and snaps in the front. This is a North Face Denali jacket. These I usually get about like $30 for. Like this isn't anything I would have paid $15 for out in the wild. It's in great condition, but she has dogs. It definitely needs to be washed and dried. So I'm actually gonna toss that over there. This is a Kenneth Cole, New York. It's just kind of like a your basic double-breasted pea coat, but I like the length on this. It, it would come down probably to just above your knee. And what I like about Connie is that she had a lot of just very classic styles. So things that I think will just, they'll be in fashion for a very long time. This is Mark, New York. This is Andrew Mark. I love the high collar on this. And this is a shorter length, a little bit more of like a swing style. I like the little detail right here. I don't know if you can see the stitching. This is size 12. I'm gonna grab more coats off the rack here. These two leather coats are the ones that I'm hoping to get higher priced for. This one I'm obsessed with. It has all this leather fringe. It's in gorgeous condition. It's very soft. It almost has like this little flap in the front, like this piece that comes over here. It's belted. It's a super soft leather and it's just by Leather Concepts. So I don't think that's any fancy name. It is a size medium, moto style. It can fold over here. This is the softest leather. I might show this to my rep at the real real just to see. I'd love for this to sell between 150 and 200. So I might list it even a little higher than that. Some of these pieces I feel would do very well if they had somebody modeling them. That is just a gorgeous leather coat. Now this one is by Studio Sienna. It's a large made in Korea. This is definitely vintage. Oh, oh, and this is new with tag. I don't know that I noticed that. Uh, this is another moto style. Each one of these pieces is a little bit different. And what I love about this one is that it has gold zippers, which is pretty trendy right now. I feel like most leather jackets I see, they're accented with silver. And this is all with gold, plus it's new with tag. It's like a double belt in the back here. Really cool, very trendy right now. Um, so very exciting there. I do have four leather coats, four genuine leather coats. This is the last one. <laughs> My model is wearing this. I probably have to take it off of her. That was a little too up close. This is Express. And what I love about this is it's Vintage Express. It's size 13, 14, but it is actually genuine leather. I don't know that modern Express would sell actual leather items. Correct me if you know, I don't really follow Express the store now. There's a tiny, tiny bit of wear on the elbow here. It's a collarless jacket, similar to the Valerie Stevens one. This is very minimalist. And I think I have this priced at 99. I definitely priced a little bit higher with some of these pieces only because I paid up for them. And when you see the sweaters, I kind of have to make up for the cost on some of the bigger ticket items in order to make sure that I make a decent profit on some of the pieces. One item already sold and it's in this basket, I'm pretty sure. This Max Studio made in Hong Kong. This is a beautiful like duster sweater belted. This is a size large. I might have to try this on. It's gorgeous. It buttons down the front. You can wear it open, which is what I would do, or you can belt it. And again, just a timeless piece. She had so many pieces in here that were neutral, that you could layer, that could go with other stuff. It was just gorgeous. This is just a Max Studio turtleneck black sweater. Very basic, again, like when you think in terms of me paying $15 for each piece, this is where I could potentially you know, not do so well. So I'm hoping to make up for it with the other stuff. I'm gonna show you all the cashmere pieces. I do have a few more coats, but I'm gonna show you the cashmere. This is Sutton Studio, just a red cashmere, 
very beautiful. This is a size extra large, made in Hong Kong. This green, I think is trending right now. Also very pretty. Extra large, this is Sutton Studio for Bloomingdale's, made in New Zealand. This is a blazer, dead stock. A lot of her stuff was new with tag. This is just Dana Buckman, and I believe, I can't tell if this is black or navy blue. Double-breasted, has a $348 price tag on it, and like a 50% off, $175. Definitely vintage, really nice shoulder pads and everything. This is beautiful, too. This is Ellen Tracy. I mean, this kind of looks like something you could get at TJ Maxx, but it's got like the little thin belt. It's like a very subtle taupe, very light grayish. Minor, minor pilling on this, but like this is probably going to be like a $25 item. This is Lewin Gray, a more contemporary piece, but really pretty. Again, this is probably like a $20 to $30 flip. This is size large in cream. Don't you love her palette and her style? I love all the neutral colors. This is apartment nine. So this is something I don't even know if I would pick up at the bins. Uh, and that happened with my other buyout. Some items are like, wow, this is totally fantastic and others aren't so well. What I will say is regardless of the brand on her stuff, her style is great. This is a size medium, you can wear that open. It kind of has these fun like dolman style sleeves. These are all cashmere sweaters and look at the palette. They're just gorgeous. There's like cream and gray and leopard and brown, total staples. Okay, so Valerie Stevens. I mean, I'm hoping that most of the cashmere will be between um, 30 and $50, depending. And that's ambitious. This is DKNY, sleeveless, classic. And I went through all of the cashmere and on two sweaters, I did find some holes, which stinks. Um, this is leopard. I love this little neckline. This is really pretty cashmere as well. This is chocolate brown. These are really pretty. There are two like this that cross over in the front. I feel like this is a style you would see at Aritzia, um, but it's cashmere. Uh, this is medium. This is cashmere, Saks Fifth Avenue, cardigan, size large. The, ca the cashmere is beautiful. I wish cashmere had a better resale price. Sometimes it does. This is, oh, it's gray. This is gorgeous. Love this. I'm going to try to get a little more for these just because I feel like the style is very in right now. More Donna Karen sleeveless. I mean, these sleeveless ones, I don't expect to get 30. I mean, 30 if I'm lucky. Another Bloomingdale's Sutton Studio Extra Large. This one's really pretty. I like the colors on this. Mm, I love this. We have more cashmere. <laughs> Another Valerie Stevens. 100% cashmere made in Hong Kong. So these are, at any time you see like the Korea or Hong Kong, you know that it is um, vintage. These are some more modern pieces. This is J. Crew, has a price tag on it for $89. It's just a popover sweater. It's got like little button detail here. Very cute. I like that. I'll probably list these at half price. So list them for 45 and I'll leave, list this one for probably 50. This is also J. Crew, new with tag, $98. The striped with butterflies, really cute. She had so many things that were new with tag. She kept saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have so many new items. This is Lewin Gray and it's really nice. This is a size large. Um, I'm gonna try to get a little bit more for this piece because it's just so nice. Feels like it might have some alpaca, but definitely wool. Uh, it's got this great V-neck, tunic length, you know, just that really cozy would be great with jeans. Acrylic and wool and polyester and 8% alpaca, but a really nice, a nice blend. This is a good buyout to do at this time of year because I feel like this would have been a tough lot to move in the middle of summer, but there are some gorgeous pieces for winter. This is J. Crew 2. But this is, it just says, ooh la la, ooh la la. And it is new with tag. And it is from Talbot's, size medium. Um, so this is one. So right there are 20 sweaters. So if those sweaters all sell for $30 each on average, that's $600 return. So I do think as I add everything up, I do think this will be a good money maker. Um, it's just going to take some time. Let's take a peek at some of the accessories we got because I did get some cool shoes and handbags. 
Okay, let's start with these. This is a bunch. Okay, these are clogs, K-L-O-G-S. These are a size seven and a half. Really great condition. Um, comps on clogs are anywhere between like $35 and $65. I have these listed at $68 because there is not a single pair of these clogs that look like this. This funky abstract pattern. Um, and they are in great condition. These uh, Born BOC. These are patent leather. Kind of cute. These would have been like a bins pickup to me for me. Obviously would not have paid $15 for these. Um, but they are cute and I'm hoping for between $20 and $35 for these. I'll probably list them around $38. That might be ambitious. Okay, this bag is gorgeous. One of the most beautiful Cole Haan bags I have ever seen. It's in beautiful condition. It has this little flap in the front. This is a bag that I will list high and it could go two ways. I mean, it could sit forever if I keep it listed high or someone else will see the beauty in it. I mean, it is like brand new on the inside. It has a pink liner. It looks like a little scratch on the bottom here on the leather, but the leather is gorgeous. Cole Haan is such an unsung hero in my opinion. I feel like their quality is so gorgeous. Some people see, the, see it and will pay up for it and other times things sit. I think this is gonna do well because it is very different. It's got the braided tassel fringe on the side, very boho, very original looking, almost has like an ombre effect. It's just gorgeous. I will probably start this high. I'm not sure where. What do you guys think? What would you price this at? I'm curious. Okay, this is just like your basic Coach Hamptons bag, very nice. Um, I love Coach leather. I love that it's just like a classic tote. This will probably be like a $75 sale. The liner has the signature lining, but it's in very good condition. It's like, what, what's not to love about this bag? It's just classic Coach. It has a zip top, which is nice. Um, and then lots of storage on the inside. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Maybe I'll list it at 99. I'm not sure I have to check comps on these. This is another bag that's gorgeous and not like a fancy brand if I remember correctly. Oh, this is just Banana Republic. Yeah, but I love it. Love, love it. Look at that. These nice big rings here and then all the braided detail along the side. Again, I sound like a broken record. Such classic pieces. These leather pieces, the vintage coach, um, the neutral colors, and it all works well with each other too. You have a cashmere sweater with this black bag and throw on one of the wool coats and you have like such a look. Um, so this is gorgeous. Okay, Lulu's scratching. I have to let her in. Somebody recently requested that <laughs> Lulu make an appearance in every video. So I don't know if I can have her be in every video, but here she is. Um, the wolf wagon's coming tomorrow to groom her. She needs a bath, but She's a love. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Oh, the Banana Republic bag. So nice. I'm not used to having um, the really bright light. My ring light downstairs is much stronger than the one that I typically film with. So I feel like I'm a, if I come in close, I'm getting a little overexposed. This is another one of my favorite brands by a designer who usually doesn't get me that excited. But this is a Donald Pliner bag. Just gorgeous. New with tag. Suede. Off sacks, um, it says compare at 375. It has some studded detail here and it is just so gorgeous. I love that it's a longer strap. It's a great shoulder bag. It has the dust bag included. I might try to list this a little high too. I kind of have to go for it on a lot of these pieces so that I can recoup my thousand dollars and then I'll be able to breathe a little bit. The first estate sale, it was very low risk because I think I sold one coach bag for $280 within a week and the whole haul was paid for. This is going to take a lot more to recoup the $1,000, so I have to aim high on some of these. Um, but I love this bag. Gorgeous. She had these Ugg boots, which I also think are gorgeous with the studs on the side, like silver and gold studs. They alternate like diamond shapes and circles. And they also have like the Ugg sole, like a chunky sole, maybe a teeny bit of wear on the toes here, but I think these are a size eight. I love these so much. Hoping to get over a hundred for these. 
good season. And somebody, I just got a memo that Uggs are coming back. Have you guys heard this? And that is coming from my 20 year old daughter. She put Uggs on her Christmas list. And I'm like, seriously, Angie, like we have so many Uggs in this house. I'm not buying her a new pair because I find them all the time at the bins and people pass over them. So let me know. Has anybody in your life told you that Uggs are back? I don't think I, Uggs ever went out in my opinion. Uggs are just kind of like a staple to go get the mail or you know, they're just so easy to throw on. I, and I'm talking about like the classic tall Uggs. Those are like, to me, will never go out of style, at least maybe out of style, but they're such practical boots. Like I've always loved them. But anyways, it's nice to hear that they're coming back maybe for resellers because maybe we can make some money. Okay, this is the Connie that I remember when I was in high school. Connie used to always really wear some fancy things. These are new. S-B-I-C-C-A is the brand. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. The lighting's crazy down here. They are a leather. I'm not sure what size these are. Um, made in the USA. I have no idea what these will bring, but they're very funky. Definitely a conversation piece, pair of shoes to like add a pop to an outfit. This was very random. It's like this little Florida Sunshine State new with tag. It looks like something she probably got on vacation and it has like a little clasp that is a bottle cap. <laughs> oh, and it has like a crossbody strap in here. Maybe 20 bucks for this. I'll probably list it around 30, 35. It's unique, it's cute. Um, but I have no idea what the value is. It is new. Prezo is the name tag. You can see the detail. Still has the plastic wrap on the side. That's funny. That was very random. I'm like, Connie, what is this doing here? Among all of your black leather and wool and cashmere. I laughed. These are brand new in box. These are New Balance sneakers. These orange Kush. They're really nice. And she just said she bought them too big. She's like, I don't know why I bought them. They're too big. <laughs> These are a size nine. Yeah, size nine. These are really cute. Pretty sure I have these listed already. Heel, pillow, comfort inserts. They're really nice. Now to me, it's always interesting when you do a buyout like this, um, when people remember what they paid for things. They are Philippe Model. You can see. Not sure if that's gonna register. Anyways, it has this little fringy thing that you can see where it was glued here so this is an easy things to an easy thing to fix but when connie handed me these or showed me these she's like these were so expensive she's like i paid so much money for these shoes and it's crazy right because i don't think that the resale on these will be excellent they look like brand new but i'll definitely glue these on i do think this is super fun and I think they'll photograph well with that little detail. Um, it's a nice chunky heel, square toe, 90s vibe. With New Year's Eve coming, this could be a really beautiful shoe. I'm not sure what I'll get for them. So I need to do a little bit more research, but I think I did a quick search and I was, I think, disappointed with the comps on these. Another pair of more modern shoes. These are the, the Gingers. Um, they're just Bandolino. I like this brand as far as like, they have cute stuff. These are brand new and they are just this gorgeous leopard heel. Oh, they're from Marshalls, $29.99 at Marshalls, new. I will probably price these around there, maybe 35. It says compare at $48, yeah. So these are probably like a Macy's shoe that Macy's will have for like 60 bucks and then they'll have sales and you can get them for $40, but they're new in box. This, this is a long one. This is a wool Calvin Klein, very long wool jacket. I wonder if this is something I should send to like thread up. I think Calvin Klein does well at thread up. It's double breasted, has some like little bit, little bit of hair. My carpet down here in my studio also sheds like crazy. So if anything even brushes the floor, it picks up. I'm always vacuuming down here. This is gorgeous and it's just a long wool coat. Unfortunately, the comps on a lot of these things are like between like 30 and $40. Sometimes if the pictures are really good and it's it's something that maybe you get lucky on or you price a little high, you might get between 50 and 100. And then you see the random sales that are like $175 pre-owned. But I feel like for something like this, I'll get between like 40 and $60. Again, let me know your thoughts. A lot of a lot of what I'm saying today is just like, I haven't done a ton of research. I'm just thinking out loud and sharing my thoughts with you. This piece surprised me because she didn't have a ton of color in her, uh, in her items, but this is MDP Designs. It's a size 14. 
uh, wool coat in this really great hot pink. It has like the little belt in the back. It's like a mid-length, really beautiful condition. This is the piece that has already sold and it's gorgeous. This sold for $50 um, and I did sell it to somebody who has been a repeat customer. Otherwise, I would have held on to my price um, for a little longer. I listed it at $75 and I sent out offers for $60 with discounted shipping and then she countered at $50 and I just accepted it. Sometimes I just need to like get the ball rolling. This is Zara Knit and it's got this long line. It's very heavy. This was actually a steal in my opinion for $50. It's gorgeous. But you never know with Zara. Some pieces sit for a long time. I think it's fair. I think she's really gonna love this. So definitely runs a little bit big. Gorgeous from Zara. So yay, I sold one thing. 950 to go. All right, so this is a Saks Fifth Avenue coat, and this is gorgeous. I have this priced at $249. This is alpaca. It's a little bit of a swing coat in this beautiful, like, cinnamon brown color. This was one of my favorite, favorite pieces. It is from Saks. Comps were all over on this, too. Some people let this go for a song, and other people um, sold it, and it was, you know, around that $150 to $200 mark. So I priced high on this mainly because I think it's gorgeous, and it's alpaca. So, you know, whenever I find something with alpaca, it gets priced accordingly. So 40% alpaca surrey and 58% wool made in Peru. Stunning, stunning swing coat. Love this. I think I have a couple more like suits, like full on suits. I think by Ellen Tracy, they have like the dry cleaner wrap. They're in a different room. And then these three pairs of pants, uh, Ralph Lauren, black, new with tags. These are always just tricky to photograph. But this is Lauren. Um, this extra large size is not new with tags. The large is new with tags and they're just like a wide leg classic uh new with tag and the price tag is 79 dollars. i think i have them priced at 45 um, for the new with tag pair and then this is dkny city dkny was so huge in the 90s i don't know how much money i'll get for these these i might as well just keep the black ones but if i were to list them like the lauren ones and the dkny that are pre-owned i'll probably list those around 32 35 dollars and they'll probably sell somewhere between 20 and 28 and last but not least definitely not least i started with the um Louis Vuitton bags. And then I really think that this Burberry trench coat, it's like a shorter trench coat. It's in beautiful condition. It's got the classic Nova check on the inside. It's Burberry London. And, and I'm really hoping to get between three and $400 for this coat. Well, I have this listed, I think above $500. And we're just gonna see for a while. I'm not really in a hurry. I would rather wait for the right buyer. The last time I had a really nice Burberry coat, I had it listed in the sixes, I wanna say, and a viewer reached out to me and said that she would like to purchase it. And I did a direct sale for $450, I believe. And I had paid like 40 or $60 for that coat, but that one was quilted. It was like a champagne color. It was a little more unique than this, but it was a direct sale. So I didn't have to take the 20% hit from Poshmark. Um, if I had left it online, I probably would have held out for a little over $500. That was a great flip. And if this can be somewhere, you know, between three and $500, that would be great for this as well. I did get over 50 pieces. So I'm really hoping that some of those anchor items like the Louis Vuitton and the Burberry and some of those really beautiful leather handbags will recoup my money and then the rest will be all of my profits. And at the very least, I will keep the Louis Vuitton bag and really enjoy that for a little while. What did you think of my thousand dollar haul? Do you think it was worth it? Do you think I'll make my money back? Would you have paid a thousand dollars for what I got? It was great to catch up with Connie. She's already messaged me and she said, I found more stuff. I'll have to do this again in the spring. I gotta get all this stuff listed. If you are interested in any of this, please let me know. Caitlin's coming today, my godsend, my helper. Um, so we're going to be listing this throughout um, these 10 days of happy holidays. I hope you enjoyed this installment. I'll be back tomorrow with a new video. I hope you're enjoying the series. Be sure to subscribe if you are. If you want to see more, hit the bell notification if you want to be notified when I release a video. And give this video a thumbs up if you had a good time. Thank you so much for watching. I'm having so much fun with happy holidays. You guys are the best. I love you. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.